indicating relative extrema is something that we need to know how to do when we're graphing functions. Uh, for that, we use the first derivative test, which I'll get to in a second, but first we need a definition, uh, a critical number. A critical number is where a function's derivative is either zero or undefined. So for like this function here, this has three critical numbers, one, two, and three. Uh, this one here, we, this is what we call a relative maximum or a, a local max because it is a maximal value local to the surrounding points. You have a re relative max, min, relative max. Uh, relative extrema must occur at critical numbers. Uh, let's see how we can figure out how to distinguish the mins from the maxes. I have uh, seven examples here of some functions with each of which has a critical number. Uh, but we have a relative min, a re re relative min, neither, neither min nor max, uh, relative max, relative max, and neither uh, again. While relative extrema m must occur at critical numbers, if a function has a critical number, it does not necessarily imply that it has a relative max or min. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little sign chart uh, for the derivatives of these functions. So we have decreasing, increasing, and decreasing, increasing, uh, increasing. Uh, we have increasing, 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 uh, increasing, then decreasing, increasing, then decreasing, and always decreasing. Uh, I said before I started this, it, they're, it, they're really easy to pick out. These are the relative, these exhibit relative maxima, and these two exhibit relative minima, while the, the other three uh, just qualify as neither. Uh, way that, so a way that we can tell where a function has a max or a min is by using its sign chart and looking for sign changes, right? These are mins. It's no coincidence that the derivative of these functions go from negative to positive. They make that switch. And these being the maxes, there's the sign charts of their derivatives go from positive to negative. And that's what is known as the first derivative test. Generally speaking, when a function's derivative changes sign from positive to, to negative, then the original function will have a local max. And when the function's derivative changes sign from negative to positive, uh, the function will have a lo local minimum. As an example of this, I have a couple of well, I have a random sign chart drawn up here. Um, let g be an unspecified continuous function, and uh, here's a sign chart for g prime. If you made a sign chart for some continuous function and wound up, and it wound up being this way, you would look for sign changes to identify the relative maxes and mins. So, for example, we say that we have a max here. Uh, we would have a min here because sign change. Okay. Uh, nothing's going on here, it's neither a max nor a min because there's no sign change and stays positive, undefined, and positive. And then here we have another relative max. And that's all there is to it. It's really easy if you have a sign chart already mapped out. Uh, another way that the information could come to you is if you have a continuous function and this is the graph of its derivative. Given the graph of its d d d derivative, can we identify the relative extrema of f? The answer is yes. All we have to do is look for sign changes. First, how many critical numbers are there? Uh, where is the root of zero or undefined? It's zero here, 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 and undefined there, and zero at the end. So those are candidate points for maxes and mids. Uh, there's nothing happening here. There's no sign change, right? The, the derivative stays positive to either side of this zero. So the function is increasing all throughout here. It's increasing, increasing, increasing. Then here, the derivative switches sign from positive to negative. So that's max for f. Maximum must occur there. And then here, we have the sign change back again from negative to positive, so there's a relative min. Then the derivative shoots up and then comes down from minus infinity. Uh, but there is still a sign change. Since I said ahead of time that f of x was a continuous function, then the function must remain continuous and sort of survive through this break in the derivative here. Uh, what's going to happen is, since there's a sign change from positive to negative, that means that f of x does indeed have a local max here. What could that look like? Well, if you examine the derivative, go, it goes to positive infinity from one side, so it goes straight up. Remain
remains, the function remains continuous, and then directly to the other side, the derivative starts at minus infinity and gets less steep. So it's really doing this. You could expect such a graph to look like that, indicating the maximum here. And that's what it would look like for, for that one point. And then again, at, at the end, there's another uh, relative minimum at the end. You usually give students trouble when you don't give them functions. So that's how that goes. And last uh, analytic example, uh, the question would say, uh, here's y. Uh, where are the relative extrema of y? Well, you got to do the first derivative test, so you take the derivative and then you got to make a sign chart for it. So we'll factor it out. The critical numbers are located at 0. Uh, and at 0, 0, and at x equals 1, 0. Uh, you pick a large number, plug it in. Uh, if you make x large, you'll wind up with a negative value. Will we get a sign change across 1? Yes, because it only appears once in the factorization, we get positive. And will we get a sign change across 0? No, because it appears twice in the factorization, we get positive again. So this function, uh, the original must be increasing, incre then it flattens out, then it's increasing again, and then it starts to decrease. So by the first derivative test again, y has a relative maximum here. So here's the max. And indeed, that is the only max, that's, the, that's not only the relative max, it's the absolute maximum of the function, because it's always increasing before that number and always decreasing thereafter. We could expect a function like this to look something like, like that with this point here corresponding with that little stutter there. And then it goes, there's your max, and it comes back down, and that's that.